They call it the ASUS Republic of Gamer Flow X13, one of my favorite laptops from 2021 and now refreshed in 2022. The reason this laptop is so amazing is first and foremost, it is so thin and light. And there's a lot of thin and light laptops on the market. But what makes this special is the performance it packs, the battery life it holds, and how thin and light the package is. And of course, you can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen now. Keep in mind that this would not be your ultimate desktop replacement, though it does have a dedicated GPU. It only comes with four gigs of VRAM inside of the RTX 3050 Ti. I personally prefer the RTX 3060 or higher if I'm going to say, hey, this is a beast of a 6K video editing machine. This thing would handle 4K no problem. I personally work in 6K, so I need a little bit more performance to work on the day-to-day -day without any lagginess. Okay, keep that in mind because where I see this laptop perfectly suited is for the 4K on-the-go video editor. You get 13 hours of battery life for productivity tasks. You get upwards of four hours of video editing on this laptop. You could get eight hours of Photoshop work on the go. That is extremely rare for even an Ultrabook that isn't even as powerful as this Ryzen 9 6900HS equipped laptop. And that's just getting things started. I mean, the build quality and functionality of this laptop is fantastic. It also is a two-in-one laptop. So, have your touch screen and you're good to go if you're a digital artist. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this is the new phase of Ultrabooks. For the longest time, vendors have been trying to put low TDP processors inside of Ultrabooks and for what purpose? Just learn how to cool a hotter processor in a thin and light chassis and you will have something as glorious as the X13. Now, one thing I expected is for the thermals to be a drawback on the X13, but it proved me wrong. And this year we had improved thermal results inside of the X13 with this Ryzen 9 6900HS processor. So I was very happy to see actually improved thermal results, still great battery life and still great performance. With excellent connectivity with an HDMI, two USB type C's, one behind the rubber cover for the external GPU that can actually be connected to this laptop, a headphone jack, as well as a USB type A and additional USB type C on the right side, and of course your power button. This laptop vents very well, it's very quiet, and remains fairly cool for most performance tasks. Now, some downsides to this laptop before we get even more carried away would be this small trackpad. If you're looking for a laptop that's a 14 inch laptop with performance and a great trackpad, I would lean you towards the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14. I might do a head to head review between those two laptops, but for now, that would be a simple recommendation. The reason is this is just a small trackpad. I mean, look at how little, look at how tiny that is. This deserves a larger trackpad. They could push the keyboard up, give us a little more height and you'd be good to go. So that would be probably my biggest complaint about this laptop because even my Lenovo Yoga 9i has a slightly larger trackpad. And this isn't anything earth shattering. I mean, this has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. This has a 16 by nine. So they have the height to add the larger trackpad. They just chose not to. Again, my big negative for this computer. Now it does have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, as I said, which makes it much more roomy, bringing back the Yoga 9i again for even your productivity tasks on the day to day. That extra bit of aspect ratio really does help when working on a small screen like a 13 inch. Now this laptop does have the benefit of coming with a webcam and here's a quick sample so you can see how that looks. Here is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And of course, if you're curious what the speakers sound like on this laptop, I've done a quick audio sample so you can hear how the speakers sound when you're listening to music or watching a video. Now the keyboard is great. It's got a lot of functionality baked right onto it without any of those extra superfluous numpads and home keys and all the extra stuff that I really never end up using. But what I do often want is control for my fan modes. And you can quickly toggle through each of them right here from your keyboard. Now also jump into the command center very quickly by clicking the Asus Armory Crate button, which is where you can get the great battery life that I was mentioning earlier. 
Now, one of the reasons you can get such good battery life on this computer is because it has something called eco mode. Basically, you can turn off the GPU and run only on the CPU. That allows you to get much better battery life than even the most prominent Ultrabooks on the market right now. But let's say you need more performance, you get to where you're going, plug your computer in, quickly jump onto ultimate mode, tap into turbo, and you immediately have fantastic performance for this laptop. And even on silent mode, I was seeing great performance, which we'll look at in the benchmarks here in just a few minutes. Now, not only does this have great battery life, come in a thin and light package, but it also comes with a color accurate screen. You get 100% sRGB, 79% Adobe RGB, and 80% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.5. And your screen is a 300 nit screen. So it is plenty bright for all of your average use cases, unless you're somebody working outside very often this screen will be plenty bright for you. Jumping into the benchmark charts, this laptop really holds its own against some of the other great laptops that I recommend for creators. Now keep in mind that I'm putting this laptop up against others with i9 processors and RTX 3070 Ti's. So the fact that it's even on the same charts or even close to some of these is fantastic because of how thin and light this laptop is. It's unreal, the performance, portability and battery life you can get out of this laptop. Looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see the facts that I'm talking about how this laptop does sit on the lower end of the charts, but it's not far away from its G14 counterpart. Being that that's a slightly thicker laptop, it gets a little more ventilation and so they can push the components a little bit harder. Plus the G14 comes with a eight gig VRAM graphics card compared to the four gig VRAM graphics card inside of the X13. Now, as we move on through these simulated benchmarks, of course you saw Geekbench single core, multi multi-core, Cinebench R20, R23, both single core and multi-core, they were all about the same pace on the chart compared to the other models. So let's get out of the simulated benchmarks because those often cause me a little bit of frustration because what do they really mean? They're not an actual program doing anything for creator workloads. Let's take a look at Blender. As you can see in Blender, it once again is on the lower end of the chart, but it is sitting above the Acer Swift X14 with the i7-1260P. And the reason I think it's a good notation of these two comparisons is because the i7-1260P is a low TDP, ultra low power processor inside of a thin 14 inch laptop. But keep in mind that the X13 gets well above the battery life of the Swift X. It's ridiculous how well battery life this laptop does compared to that ultra low power processor. And in this instance, it's getting better performance. That's why I think this is one of the great on the go creator focused, powerful laptops that still great, gets great battery life. Now moving forward into Autodesk 3ds Max on Autodesk Maya, you can see we're sitting on the bottom of the charts, but keep in mind that this laptop is biting on the heels of other powerful laptops that totally make the cut for 3D modeling. So you're really just kind of right behind those other laptops. Again, I would not recommend this as, you know, the quote unquote desktop replacement or the go-to best laptop for 3D modeling, but it will definitely do the trick. As you can see in PTC Creo and SolidWorks, it again is picking up the slack at the end of the rope, but it is right behind it. It's not like it's vastly falling off the charts. It's not like we're scoring in the 200s and then we're scoring way down in the 90s. It's right behind some of those more popular laptops. Now looking at After Effects, this is a test where we see it get a little bit of distance between itself and some of the other RTX 3050 Ti equipped laptops. We got about a 40 point difference between the HP Victus Ryzen 5 5600H and RTX 3050 Ti. That is a thick, chunky gaming laptop. Again, thinner or lighter. I'm going to continue to emphasize that. That is the big benefit of this laptop. It's one of the benefits I was mentioning in one of my live streams I was doing the other day when making laptop recommendations. You're getting great performance inside of a nice thin chassis. Moving forward into the Photoshop benchmark, that's where this laptop showed off very well. A lot of these laptops are scoring in the 900s to 1000s. To me, it is unnecessary to be that high of a benchmark in Photoshop. It looks really great, it shows off very well, but if you're above the 700s, you are plenty fine. And this laptop is sitting comfortably in the high 820 range. So you don't have to worry about anything as far as your performance is concerned in Photoshop. Now jumping into video editing, we're looking at Premiere Pro Playback. 4K has zero drop frames. This laptop performs well with 4K footage in Premiere Pro. 
But like I mentioned, I'm a 6K shooter. So I would not choose this laptop as my ultimate desktop replacement. However, if I wanted to take a trip and I needed to bring my camera with me and I needed to edit some footage on the go, I could totally get away with it with this laptop editing 6K B-RAW. Now 6K RED footage was quite a bit heavier, but keep in mind that a lot of last year's laptops with i7 11700H processors and RTX 3060 GPUs were not even getting close to 6,000 drop frames. They were in the 10, 11, and 12,000 drop frames in red footage. So to see the Ryzen 9 6900HS more optimized in this laptop this year is truly an accomplishment and does say that you could edit some 6K red, though it would be a little on the finicky side. Now moving towards the export times, you can see that we get about a three minute and 58 second export time out of Premiere Pro, nothing earth shattering. Really the, the, the gold standard is around the 230 to 245 range for laptops that are really equipped well for video editing. But again, a 358 is not bad out of this laptop. It's really a good export time. But I don't wanna sell you lies that this is like the best thing ever. Now, going on to the 6K export time, this is where I mentioned, okay, yeah, it would not be the best 6K laptop because as you can see, really the gold standard is gonna be from about 16 minutes to 13 minutes. This laptop exports the nine minute clip at around 23 minutes. So almost double the time on the export. Now jumping over to DaVinci Resolve, we're getting about an eight minute and 59 second 4K export time. I really thought this one would do better it's something that kind of surprised me. I thought we'd maybe see this six minute range. Do note that playback inside of DaVinci Resolve is smooth, but you're getting slightly longer export times out of Resolve compared to Premiere Pro here in these tests. Looking here at the export times, it's pretty amazing to see that on battery power, you can actually export the footage at four minutes and 28 seconds compared to the three minute and 58 second export time on plugged into power turbo mode. So note that this laptop is efficient at either on battery power or plugged into the charger, which is a really neat option for you. Now, earlier I mentioned the thermal results and actually during 4K video editing, we saw thermal results in the mid 70s. Where I saw the hot thermal temperatures was actually for Photoshop. And as you can see, the Photoshop thermal results coming up on the screen right now, that's where we saw the processor in the mid 80s. Now this is a really heavy CPU intensive task inside of Photoshop, which pushed the laptop a little harder. So note that this laptop runs pretty cool compared to other Ryzen 9 6900HS equipped laptops. So if you're thinking like the G14 versus this laptop, this laptop will be substantially cooler in regards to thermals. Now fan noise was good. It wasn't great. We did see up to 50 decibels of fan noise out of this laptop for Photoshop and about 52 decibels out of the laptop for video editing. So it's not exactly a quiet laptop. We could get down to about the 45s or 42s, but it's nowhere in like the silent area of the 35s or 30 decibel range. This was an attempt for a very unbiased review. I tried to tell you some good, some bad, but really what it comes down to is this is an insane thin and light package that has great performance, great battery life, a color accurate screen, the connectivity that you need as an on the go creator, and it's packed with a two in one functional screen that is a touch screen. It just, it has so much to offer. There's a few laptops that might come close to being a competitor with this laptop, but it really is in a league of its own because of all the unique functionality that it comes with. If I was allowed to keep this laptop long-term, I would, but unfortunately it's a demo like many of the ones I have here on my channel. Sad tier. Now, if you're curious about the live pricing and availability of this laptop, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use a link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Comment below, let me know your thoughts on this laptop, if you would make a purchase of it or what your use case might be. Otherwise, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future episodes. I'll see you here in the next one.